a very warm welcome to St. James's Church this Sunday morning, and what a glorious day it is today on this 18th day of April 2021. And hello to our Facebook friends who are joining us live, and for those of you who will be watching this later on our Facebook channels or YouTube channel. Welcome. Um, just one announcement this morning, well two actually, um, several people have placed flowers at the, at the foot of the cross out in front of the church for Easter. And if you have, please do um, pick those up today or sometime this week and take them home. Thank you so much for helping us to create our Easter garden um, that we have had out front. So thank you for that. Also today at 1130, we have a social Zoom hour. Um, you're welcome to join us, even if you, for those who are in the church here or for those watching, um, please do join us at 1130. And if you need the Zoom contact, Zoom login details, please do uh, see myself or the Millwards and we can let you know what that login detail is. Um, other than that, uh, Stephen will be leading and preaching today and I'll turn it over to him. Thank you, Ellen. It's lovely to be with you again, everybody. We're on the third Sunday of Lent. No, no Easter. <laughs> Wake up, old man. <laughs> on the third Sunday of Easter, we're celebrating the resurrection. And so we can boldly say, if you remember the response, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. And there'll be another chance for that later in the service. If we follow the order of service on the sheet, it's also on the screen. And if I get it wrong, don't be surprised. <laughs> One of the beautiful things about coming to church is we know we're coming into the presence of God. The Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is with us. Let's prepare our hearts for worship using the next prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We can't sing, but we can listen to a hymn and join in with the worship there. And here's uh, our first song on the screen.
Maggie is going to read our Bible readings for us. First one, <coughs> excuse me, John 1, chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we shall be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they do not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appears that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives with him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Luke 24, verse 36 to 48. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe, yet because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened up their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached and his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are a witness of these things. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Maggie. Hello, Mr. Hedins. I'm not going to preach this morning. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> We must always remember that we are not the church. We're a little tiny part of the church. The Diocese of Ely has one or two links with other dioceses in the world. And uh, on this Sunday, they remember, we remember, although we usually forget, <laughs> that we have a link with the Diocese of Kigali in Rwanda. Very different situation to ours, but people just like us, worshipping the Lord. And uh, the Bishop of Kigali, his name is Nathan, has prepared a sermon for us and for everybody else in this diocese. And so instead of me preaching for you, he's going to preach to you through the wonders of modern communications uh, from Kigali in Rwanda. The idea of the link that we have is uh, to share each other's spiritual spirituality, culture and life, share in the mission of God's kingdom together, engage in common tasks to support each other, have an insight into and help bear each other's burdens, develop a worldwide understanding of the kingdom of God. And I think Bishop Nathan's going to help us to do that as we listen to this sermon. Hello, uh... I want to say good morning and greetings from Kigali, uh, especially from uh, the Anglican Church of Rwanda and Kigali Diocese in particular, and especially from St. Ethian Cathedral, where I am standing now, right in the middle of Kigali. And we want to greet all our viewers online, but more especially we want to say hello to all our friends out there in Ely Diocese. We want to say thank you so much for being our friends. Especially want to say thank you so much to Bishop Stephen, Doug Moore, and all your team, like uh, Archdeacons, Hugh, Alex, and all the pastoral team in Ely Diocese. We really want to thank you for our friendship, for partnership in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we have always said, people who brought the gospel to Rwanda the two doctors, uh, Smith and Sharp, they came from Cambridge, uh, somewhere in Cambridge, which is in Ely Diocese. I am yet to find out the particular fellowship, but I understand they were in a student's fellowship. So maybe, maybe the fellowship where you took me one time. But we really want to say thank you so much to Bishop Steve and even to my predecessor, Bishop Louis, for giving life to this our partnership. As you can imagine, our partnership is not only a friendship, but is also a divine historical connection that was started between your diocese and sending missionaries to come and plant the church in Rwanda. We want to bless you so much and we look forward to the day you are going to stand here in this cathedral and we show you to our people. So we are so proud of you. And I wanted to share with you this morning from God's Word. And we are going to read from Luke chapter 24. And we are starting from verse 36. In this particular part of the Bible, we are seeing after resurrection. Jesus is resurrected. He has come back from the dead. And he's just appearing to his disciples and apostles. And they are shocked. So the title of my message this morning is When Light Comes. When Light Comes. Where did I take this title from to say that when light comes? I took it while I was preparing and, 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 and preparing to speak to you on this Sunday. I remembered something that happened to me when I was young, many, 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 many years ago. I was, my parents kept cows and they kept goats 
and we lived in the wild as we looked after our animals. And as most of you who know the area of uh, where I was brought up, it was, um, it had a lot of civil wars and we were always running away from one place to another. And on this particular time, we had to run away from the militia. They wanted to steal our cows and our goats. And so we had to run away in the deep of the night and go far where they would not find us. And so when we went, we really went so far. We reached deep inside the jungle and we made the campfire and we got our cows surrounding us and we put our goats in a small bush right in the middle where the cows were. And in the middle of the night, we were attacked by a gang of hyenas. My God, you've never been attacked by an animal in the middle of the night. It was around three, three in the night. And remember, it is all dark. It's just in the jungle, it's dark. You can't see beyond the campfire. And so we were sleeping near the campfire, our cows were there, and our goats were there. And while we are, while we are sleeping, we had the goat cry. You know, goats can make funny noise when they are being eaten. We had one goat say, meh, meh. And all our cows were scared, and we all jumped out of beds. Unfortunately, I was the youngest on the cattle keeping team. Maybe I was around 10 or nine. And so when we jumped out, we realized we had been attacked by wild animals. And this time we did not know which animal it was so that we know how to behave. But how we knew it was a strong wild animal, our dogs began to make signs to us to show that we were under attack. And then, you know, they were putting their tails in their back. They were showing things are not right. And so we stood up. While we are still standing up, and then we are holding our spears in our left arm. For you who know how to use spears, a spear goes in the left arm, and then your stick goes in the right arm for the cattle keepers. The reason is simple, is that you got to change and put your spear in the right arm when it's time to strike. And so we put, we changed our spears and we stood there. And then we began to fight with hyenas until in the morning. But as we were fighting, I was so scared. It was one of the most scary nights that I remember in my entire life. These animals were surrounding us. We did not know where they were, but there were so many. They were making strange noises. Our cows were so scared. And I remember praying. I really prayed hard. I prayed, and my prayer was, God, bring us daylight. What I wanted, when light comes, darkness flees away. So I wanted light to come so that darkness can go away. And I began to pray. I said, God, you have always heard my prayers. I beg you by the mercy of, <laughs> of your son, Jesus Christ, please send us daylight. Now what I want to tell you is that waiting for the daylight when you are so scared. You know, one minute was like 10 days and an hour was like many years. We was many, like, like many years of waiting. So I kept praying and praying. But our God is a good God. Finally, daylight came. Daylight came. It began slowly, but it kept building up and light was coming, and kept coming, and then we could see around us. We could see the other side. We could see the hills. We could fight these animals when we can see where they are coming from. And if I take this to Rook, chapter 24, from verse 36, verse 36 says, as they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood amongst them, and said to them, peace be to you. While they are talking, you know, Jesus had just appeared to Simon. 
And these women who had gone to the tomb in the morning, they came back with the testimony saying, we have seen angels. And Cleophas and his friend who had been walking to a mouse, they came back and they were telling their experiences. And while all of them are still excited, but they can't interpret the excitement, Jesus Christ came and stood amidst them. Hallelujah. Jesus came, I can imagine, he stands in the midst of them, and then he said, peace be unto you. Let's see verse, what verse 37 says. Verse 37 says, but they were settled and frightened. They thought they had seen a spirit, the Son of God himself is there. But they thought they had seen an evil spirit. They could not believe that Jesus could raise again from the dead. So here they are having two challenges. One, they are excited. They are saying, I think he's back. He must have. He must have resurrected. I think, the, I think it's him. But we remember him being killed. How to, could he come back so quickly? All the pain they had had in the past... All the tears, seeing their master being beaten, being killed on the cross, on the ugly cross, had made them forget all that Jesus had said. And so they believed they cannot, he's not the one. He may be a spirit. You know, these things even happen to us these days. Sometimes... We, it is easy for us to think this may be an evil spirit than thinking that this may be an angel. Even among us people of God, because of fear, we see things upside down. We see them in a different way. We expect to see spirits quickly before we see heavenly, heavenly beings. I think these days we need to change our mind and begin expecting heavenly beings than spirits. And so they were scared. They were really scared. They thought they had seen a spirit. Even for me and my cut-off keeping family, when time came and we, we had seen the light and the light had come to us, we were still scared of hyenas. We were not convinced that they fear light and that they, they had gone away. We still feared them because they had terrified us. Some of us are more afraid of what we went through in the past than having faith in the Son of God that we have believed in. And so let's see verse 39 what it says. Jesus took time from verse, I think I did not read, read 28, 38 for you. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why, are, why do you doubt? Re why, why are doubts raised in your hearts? See my hands and my feet. This is I, myself. Jesus is going extra mile to prove who he is. He says, this is I, myself. I have made it. I have defied the powers of death and hell. I have resurrected. See, it's me. Touch me. Feel me. I am here. It's me. Have faith in you. You know, it is very easy to have fear than to have faith. But Jesus here is saying, please change from having. Now that I am here, now that the Son of God is with you, please have faith that he is here and he is able and he is resurrected from the dead. So he goes on to say in verse 40 and following verses, he says, now touch me. Touch me. See, I'm real. And he says, do you have food? Give me the food. Let me test the food that you have cooked. So because demons don't eat, they don't have bones and fresh like I do. I am real. I have resurrected. Friends, I want to tell you that even these days are Jesus resurrected. It is after Easter. Jesus is resurrected. He's real. These people saw him, and he stood there, and he says, touch me, feel me, give me what to eat and what to drink. Death has no power over me, but the past had still become a problem. Many of us, the past becomes an issue 
to us. And we don't let the past go so that we can embrace the Son of God, but as past still hangs on us and takes away the joy for today and hinders us to enjoy even the future. So I don't know, amongst my listeners, amongst you friends, who are still being held prisoners by the past. Maude Thursday still becomes a problem to you. Friday, when Jesus was being killed, becomes a problem. Saturday, when everything was a silent, becomes a problem. So that you have no chance to enjoy Sunday, the day of resurrection. I want to tell you that let your, let your past go. Let the Son of God settle in your heart and enjoy the today and let the future become a reality. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for your son Jesus. When we remember what he went through on Thursday and on Friday and even on Saturday, but what an exciting what an exciting event it was on Sunday that he raised from the dead. And what an exciting day it is when he stood amidst his apostles and their disciples and they beheld him. They saw him. They touched him. They talked to him. And the Bible says he spent 40 days with them teaching things about the kingdom of God. I pray that the past, what we went through, what we've seen, may not hold us prisoners, but we may embrace the Son of God and have faith in the scriptures and have faith in the promises so that we can take on all that he promised us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Nathan, for that. There are lots to think about there. The light coming and putting the past behind us. And in a few minutes, we'll have our prayers of confession. And I think we'll, we'll focus on that past behind. Also, celebrating Easter. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Kigali has also given us... Um, a, a, a little um, snippet video of a choir from their singing and um, a song for us to uh, enjoy. And so we're going to listen to that now and then come to our prayers of confession.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. We come to our prayers of confession, trying to hold those things in our mind. Darkness has gone, the light has come. Put behind you the powers of evil and the nasty things that have happened in the past and focus on Jesus alive, standing among his disciples. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Help us turn our back on the past and stride confidently in the future with Christ. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's stand and declare our faith in the risen Christ, his Father and the Holy Spirit, using the creedal statement. It's the Apostles' Creed at number 10 on the order of service, but it's on the screen. And um, there won't be any questions, there's just the, the, the creed said together. So, boldly, we join with people all over the world, including in Kigali and Rwanda, as we declare the things we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Going to say the collect for today, which I should have said before, I think. No, I'm going to say it now anyway. And um, as we remember this particular Easter theme. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord. Give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uh, Sarah's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Um. As we come to pray now, as it says in the book of James, come near to God 
and he will come near to you. But can we be the answer to someone else's prayer? As Corrie ten Boom recounts from a German concentration camp in the Second World War, Corrie had a cold. No handkerchiefs, no tissues, no nothing. Her sister Betsy said, pray and ask God for help. Corrie laughed. Betsy prayed for God to give Corrie a handkerchief. Then, a friend arrived and gave Corrie a gift of a handkerchief. Corrie said, how in the world did you know I needed a handkerchief? And the friend replied, a voice in my heart said, bring a handkerchief to Corrie Ten Boom. So we bring to God the people, and especially our Queen, and places in our country and the world that God brings to our minds as I read the words of a song. The cross still stands. The cross still stands for every disappointment, for every broken heart, for everyone in darkness, light, for every wounded person, for every tired mind, for hopeless situations, hope. The cross still stands, the cross still towers, eternally the same. His blood still cleanses for everyone who's desperate, for everyone who's lost, for everyone who's tearful, for every painful question, for everyone's regrets, for every cry of, why God? The cross still stands, his blood still cleanses, eternally the same. Grace and peace, mercy and joy, all undeserved, I bow down. The cross still stands, the cross still towers, his blood still cleanses, eternally the same. And we bow down. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pray for righteousness and justice, honesty and integrity, for godly wisdom and insight and compassion, for every person in our land, especially our leaders. We pray for the mighty covering of the living blood of Jesus Christ over our families, over marriages, over villages, towns and cities, over our coastlands, seaports and airports, for protection of our water and of our air, the air we breathe. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
the risen Christ came and stood among the people, his disciples, and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen. We don't have uh, an offertory, a collection, uh, but um, there's a box at the door where we'd be very grateful for your contributions. But there's also a special appeal, a just giving page, and if you need help with that, ask one of the leaders, that the diocese has set up. It's sort of thank, a way of thanking God for our vaccinations. I don't know if you've been vaccinated, but I guess most of you have. Margaret gets hers this week, second dose. But uh, if you have, perhaps you would like to give a donation in gratitude for that to help pay for vaccinations in Rwanda, where um, they're nowhere near as well ahead as we are in fighting the disease, which is just as bad there as it was here. So um, it might be a way of saying thank you for the vaccine, which we got freely. Um, to put a little bit of money aside through that Dias and Just Giving page for Rwanda. Anyway, think about that. We're getting on with the service. And we're here to remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord, with your whole church throughout the world. Throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. A 
humbly we pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse us and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. In the name where we are seated to receive communion. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Peace. 
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for us, preserve our body and souls unto everlasting life. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for us, preserve our body and souls unto everlasting life. Amen. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your precious peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We join together in the prayer number 18. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And a lovely Easter hymn to finish our service. Low in the grave he lay. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. 
Hallelujah. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. You're in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.